when you're dating, chemistry is the first thing that we all cling to. You know, I want to make out with you. I like, you know, I'm very physically attracted to you. Chemistry is what takes the dating world to the next step. But it's the character is what lasts a lifetime. The best-selling author and host. The number one health and wellness podcast. On Purpose with Jay Shetty. Hey everyone, welcome back to On Purpose, the number one health podcast in the world. Thanks to each and every single one of you that come back every week to become happier, healthier, and more healed. And I am so excited for today's conversation because not only are my two guests friends of mine, but they have a new book out that I know you're going to love and I can't wait for you to read. The new book is called The Sunshine Mind, 100 Days to Finding the Hope and Joy You Want by Tanya Rad and Raquel Stevens. I can't wait to tell you about these two amazing humans. If you don't already follow them, make sure you go and follow them across social media. And today we're going to be diving into the themes inside this book. But to give you a quick overview, Raquel Stevens' most recent work includes hosting and producing Giving Back Generation. Radhi and I were guests on the show, so I can't wait to go and watch that episode. Raquel also starred in the Apple documentary, Selena Gomez, My Mind and Me, and the hit series, Selena Plus Chef. Tanya Rad co-hosts On Air with Ryan Seacrest, hosting iArt Radio's Top 40 show, The Vibe, and creating community on her popular podcast, Scrubbing In. Raquel and Tanya just released their new book, The Sunshine Mind. I want you to go order it right now. Uh, you're going to love this book and you're going to love this conversation. Uh, Tanya, Raquel, thank you so much for being here. Jay, thank you for having <laughs> us. I like fangirling because I'm a big fan of the podcast. So to be a guest on the podcast feels like... Uh, major. Uh, it's major. Yeah. And Jay, we've been friends for a while too. So it kind of feels like sitting with two close friends yeah. having, a, having a conversation. I, I was going to say that. I feel like, Raquel, I met you very early on when I moved to LA. Yep. Like probably within the first six months, I think. Yep. We and met through our friend Aline Kashishian. Absolutely. And then I love. Alina oh. had dinner with you and Roddy and Aline. And I remember her texting me after being like, you're going to love Jay and Roddy. They're the best. And oh. and so. And we've been hanging out ever since. And you've introduced me to so many wonderful people. Aww. You've been nothing but sunshine Aww, uh, in you. our life. And, and you're one of those people that I always talk about is like, there's very few people I meet that are just genuine and want genuine things for everyone in their life and want genuine people to connect. And then Tanya, we met very recently, actually, much yeah. more. But we were messaging for many years on like yeah. DMs and like all of this. Well, and I've been a fan of yours. Like oh, I so consume sweet. everything, Jay Shetty. I just find you to be a very inspirational, aspirational role model. And so I just, I love you in general. And then I remember Raquel was like our common thread. And so we met... Very recently. Yeah, but yeah. I met your wife first. Oh, no way. How do you yeah, know that? Like okay. a dinner. Oh, Roddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. At a dinner that we had. When was that? That was a while ago. Yeah, it was 2021. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a mm -hmm. couple of years. But anyway, yeah. I'm so excited because you're both finally here. Uh, both here. people that I do believe bring a lot of sunshine into the world. So the book is very apt. Uh, but I, I want to ask you so many different questions today. I want to learn more about your friendship. Yeah. I want to learn about both of you. Uh, and... I, I'm sure this chemistry is like amazing and you you know which questions you want to answer. But I want to start with both of you and say, what makes a day a great day for both of you? That's a really great question. Um, I try to make every day a great day. And I'm not saying that in a way of like, oh, I just wake up happy every single day. I think sometimes it's a, it's a choice. And so the things that make me most happy are my friends and my family and the people that I do day-to-day -day life with. So naturally every day is a good day when I'm in communication with those people. And then also, you know, all of the work that I do is committed to making a difference and to helping people. And so I feel like I'm living my life on purpose. And um, to me, that's a great day. It's being in community with people it's choosing to see the good, even when times are a little bit hard and um, having fun as well. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Tanya? I'd say mine's similar in the sense that it's really just being at peace and being happy. And for me, a, a lot of that I put in the book too are like these little nuances that I do. Um, you know, like we can get very into the mundane of our, you know, the routine of our lives. And I think it's like finding joy in those like little things. So in the morning, you know, I wake up before the sun and um, but when I walk into the studio every morning, I flicker the lights on and off and I say, <laughs> good morning, everyone. I'm like literally bringing the sun in. Sometimes it could be a little annoying, but like I think it brings everybody smiles and it just kind of brings like a levity. And so I think to me, just kind of being happy and at peace every day is, you know, I don't 
I'm not a master at it. I, I can kind of get overwhelmed. and I think you're maybe a master at it. I'm I trying to be. Yeah. I have my moments. And that's when I like turn to Raquel and I'm like, I have a lot going on. Help me. And she'll usually send a scripture. And I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and, and I love what you've done with this book. And I just want to show it to everyone who's uh, listening or watching wherever you are in the world, uh, how this book is structured. Because it's rare that two friends to come together to write a book together. Like, yeah. That doesn't happen very often. I've interviewed so many authors over my years of interviewing and you don't really see that but the way this book is structured i just want to show everyone because i've been reading it this week uh you get these beautiful uh scripture pieces here which are these favorite verses i imagine yeah uh, of both of yours but then you also get sections um that are de dedicated to whether they're written by raquel or tanya and so you're getting two perspectives on so many phenomenal phenomenal topics which i think is actually really rare when you read a book you're so used to getting one person's viewpoint or one person's research. When it comes to you two writing this book together, I've already asked you about a good day. What does a bad day look like for both of you? And how do you navigate those? Because we're writing a book called The Sunshine Mind, but there's some cloudy days in all of our lives. And you talk about a lot of that in the book. So what does a bad day look like and how do you navigate those? You know, what's interesting is why I say that this book is such a reflection of our friendship because whenever I was having a bad day or I was going through something heartbreak or, you know, you don't get that, that career, that job that you were really wanting and working hard for, Raquel is somebody that I would always turn to in those moments. And she's that friend that was, she always met me where I was. She had a scripture ready to like turn it around for me. And so when in the early phases, when I was thinking about this book, cause I had written a different book proposal. It was like a dating book and it was, you know, went, it was just on the cutting room floor. It didn't end up going anywhere. Um, so I wanted to do a devotional and I was like, Raquel's the perfect person to, to do this with, because this is exactly like what she is as a friend to me. I go to her, she shares wisdom, she's there for me. And so it was kind of a really nice yeah, and Balance. I think that's something Tanya is really great at. On a bad day, you do reach out. You yeah. do say, hey, I'm struggling. And can you pray for me? Or can you yeah. encourage me? I'm having a hard time. And I think sometimes it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to say, hey, I'm having a bad day. We want to pretend like everything's okay. And you really do embody that. Um, for me, if I'm having a bad day, I, I do the same thing. I'll, I'll call a trusted friend, um, Tanya, or my friend Ashley Cook is really solid and great that way too. You know, Ashley. Ashley yeah. um, and then I also, on my own, I'll go, we're very grateful to live in LA. I'll go and I'll drive down to the beach and I'll, I'll take a long walk and I'll listen to my music or meditations and just it might sound kind of simple and you can do this actually wherever you're listening. You don't have to go to the beach. You can go for a neighborhood walk, but I find being in nature and just taking time to be alone and be still and let the spirit come in and, and bring me peace. It works every single time. And I'm not just saying that it really does. And so I think taking that time to be alone and really asking the spirit, Hey, I'm struggling today. Today's a tough one. Please give me peace. Yeah. It can be that simple. And it, works every time. I don't shy away from the bad days too. Like mm -hmm. I've cried multiple times on the air. I've cried on Instagram. Tanya puts it all out there. I, yeah, I, I love all that. Because I, I do. There. Like I don't want people to think, you know, yeah. that I'm just, I'm always happy and that like, you know, like I have moments yeah. and I cry and, and like, can things, I life say something life. about Tanya too? Is she, early on in her career, she faced a lot with, you know, different people saying, you're too this, you're too that, you're too positive, you're too not, you're, you're never going to make it in this, in this business. Wow. Yeah. And Your I personality's just, too much. Yeah. And I have watched her stay so uh, true to who she is. She's never backed down. She's, she's stayed positive. She's stayed bubbly. She's, you know, chosen to take the high road over and over again. And her career has just grown and grown and grown. And she's never changed. She's grown, Aww. but she's never changed. She's always stayed true to her. And I think that that is incredible. Thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful. I, I love seeing a good friendship because I think that in a world that where everyone's looking for a partner uh, and, and someone to date, it's almost like friendships often get devalued or oh, yeah. become less important. Or we find that when someone finds the one or the person they want to be with, all of a sudden they don't talk to their friends anymore, only when they're heartbroken to come back to their friends to mend their you know healing heart. And so I love seeing good friendships. I have a lot of great male friends in my life as well that I turn to that that are part of my support structure. What do you think, Tanya, it is about your friendship with Raquel that made you in those instances reach out to her? Like, what is it? Because I think what you just raised there, Raquel, is we struggle with reaching out. We struggle with asking for help. We struggle with calling someone up and saying, 
I'm having a bad day. Like that is a very vulnerable, challenging thing for a lot of us to do. And a lot of us will wait months, maybe even years before we open up to our friend and say, this is what I've been going through. So what was it about your friendship that gave you a sense of trust in Raquel? And what can we learn from that? And what can people listening take away from that when they're struggling to figure out who of my friends should I tell and what can I tell them? Yeah, I do think that trust is built over time. So I think I was able to kind of see over time that she was a very trustworthy person. I know if I, whatever I told her. And also like, I'm in in an industry that I need to keep things to myself, but I always knew that I could tell her and it was like a vault. And that was, she's just proved proven time and time again that I can trust her. But something that is very unique to Raquel that I don't think, and I, I'm not as good as it, as good as she is. But when you come to her for something, she doesn't give you her opinion. She listens to you. She doesn't judge you. She doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think a lot of times if somebody's going through something, you know, somebody comes back and they're like, oh, he broke my heart again. Or like, you know, he was always awful. He treated you bad. Like, it's none of that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) we always just want to give our opinion or kind of share. And she just listens. She's there for you. She encourages you. And I think that's something that I I try to take into my other friendships too, because I I can be the opposite sometimes. And I really want to be better about no judgment. Like, I know I could tell her anything and she will just take it and like, it won't even Aww. affect you at times. No, it's it's a really it's a it's a gift. There's there's one word that you said that I wanted to point out to everyone, which I loved because I've never heard a friend described that way. She's a vault. <laughs> and I'm like that is a great the, the visual of like an actual visual, vault. Like, it's yeah. like, at your face there's on nothing, a vault. Yeah, yeah. nothing like that, getting through. Yeah, there's nothing. But, yeah. and and there's the idea that like you know because we all have a friend that you like tell a secret to, you're like please don't tell anyone, but yeah. you know they're gonna let it leak or yeah. something's right, gonna right. get out, whatever it is. Uh, everyone has a friend like that, and but but when you know your friends a vault, like I love that. I love that thought because there's such a safety there. There's yeah. such a security there. Uh, that's, that's such a great visual. And, and Raquel, with, with you and Tanya as well, like what is it that I guess allowed you to be a friend who was able to listen and not judge? Like where does that come from for you? Because I think a lot of us feel that if we're not immediately reaffirming what our friends are saying, then our friends are not going to like us. Right. Right. So like most people think if my friend came up to me and said, gee, I just broke up and you know, he was like this, whatever. And then if you don't say, oh yeah, he's a jerk. And of course, yeah, you're the best. Like we feel like our (laughs) friends, right? Like we feel like our friends are not going to feel. You're almost supposed to be on my side. Yeah, exactly. And, And if you're listening and just being patient, a lot of people might just be like, well, Raquel doesn't care about me or she doesn't really feel sorry for me or whatever. What's given you that ability to be more patient to say, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to listen and be more honest with people rather than just like tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. Well, I think it comes from um, trying to fully understand and live out true unconditional love. And when you love someone unconditionally, you're not always telling them what they want to hear. You're saying or listening to what hopefully will lead them to peace. And what I've found is that when you're bashing someone, maybe in a moment it feels good, but it doesn't lead to real peace. Even if that person did do something wrong, it's like, okay, you know what? They, that's, that sucks that that happened. That's not okay. But we're not going to waste our time dwelling on that or, or bashing that person. We're going to, you know, focus on the future. We're going to focus on what leads ultimately to peace. And so I love my friends. I love the people that are close to me. And so I try to give an honest answer. And then sometimes, you know, the person gets back with that person or they stay with them. And so imagine Tanya's one of my close friends. She's broken up with the guy and I'm like, yeah, he's this, he's that, whatever. And then they're back together. And I've said all these horrible things right, about right, the person right. that really she was just venting to me in a moment of a hard time that they were having. And so that's the angle that I tried to come at it from is, is what is the most helpful? What is the most peaceful? What is, is going to... Um, be encouraging, encouraging the most to her. Yeah, that's great. I think I think that's the kind of friend that everyone says they want, and <laughs> then we're always not sure when we actually get that. Well, friend, how do right? we grow? I mean, I welcome that from my friends. Yeah. I hope people are telling me the truth. I hope people are being honest with me and not just telling me what I want to hear because then I can't, I can't grow if people aren't being truthful with me. Absolutely, I, I feel that even in marriage, like I'm yeah. married to someone, like I um. 
Yeah, okay. I, I officiated a wedding last year <laughs> and I was practicing to my wife before yeah. I officiated and Radhi literally told me the day before that it sucked. <laughs> And, and I was, I love and, her. And, and, She's ev- so yeah. honest. and every part of my ego was like, no, it doesn't. Like I put, I put so much effort yeah, yeah, into yeah. this, like, don't you know who I am? And, and I listened because it's my wife and I trust her. And, and after my ego kind of like quietened down a bit, I was like listening to her and I was like, She's saying this for my benefit. Yeah. She yeah. wants me to be awesome tomorrow. And she's telling me in advance so that I can be awesome. Wow. I changed the whole thing, wrote it. It went great. Everything was fine. Everyone loved it. But it was just, it was so interesting because it's so hard to hear that from the yeah. people closest to us sometimes because we just want to hear them adore us and, and validate us, right? So mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course, you you know, if Tanya's coming to me and she's been really hurt by someone, I'm not immediately going to be like... <laughs> Well, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You deserve, you know, you deserve that. it. You de- no, it's acknowledging it. It's being like, yeah. wow, that's like, that's not okay. That's wrong. But then, you know, not not feeding it, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But you know what's oh, interesting? What I've learned in, in friendships and relationships is like, there is no right and wrong. Mm. There, You know, there's, there's two people. There's two different perspectives. Mm. There, we've all grown up differently. We handle situations differently. And I think that... As an individual, we just think our way is the right way and the mm-hmm. way we do things is the way that everybody should do things mm-hmm. when in reality, that's not how life is. Yeah. And so it's kind of just, you know, learning how to to work in that space of like, okay, this is how you see it. This is how I see it. Now, how can we work together to mm-hmm. like get to the finish line? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, let's dive into the book. Um, you chose 100 days, which I'm fascinated by why 100 days. And I'd love for you to tell us because- uh, it's it's a it's a beautiful number. I like I like a hundred days. I'm like yeah. you can achieve a lot in a hundred days, yeah. but it feels manageable. Why a hundred days? I think for ex- exactly that reason. I think you do 365. It feels like oh wow, that's really overwhelming. That's what we were gonna Whoa. do 365. Yeah. And then yeah, we're yeah. like, mm. no, I think a hundred is is digestible, and it's yeah. you know we could have done 30. People say it takes 30 days to create a new habit, yeah. or you, we could have done 90. But I I thought a hundred was like a good number you've yeah. got the three digits but it's not like whoa 365 yeah. that long to find hope and joy i want maybe no yeah yeah what do you and do? also <laughs> like i think having a uh, something that you can go to daily for an extended period of yeah. time is good but also if you skip a day or two it's not the end of the world and you still you know what i mean like i think 100 is felt yeah like a good number I, i'm gonna tell you that i i feel the same way because my original book the one that's coming out now as well was meant to be 52 rules of love and my editor was like yeah I think that's really overwhelming yeah so it came down to eight and it was it was a similar sort of feeling of like how do you make it feel manageable and actionable and powerful but but it's not always easy to do that with the number but I think 100 days is great like you said it takes 30 to 90 days to form a habit 100 days is is a brilliant commitment it feels like you achieve something one of the things you talk about in the book is overcoming imposter syndrome And I love that topic so much because I think that people are, and I've only picked my favorite days and things that I think were were really powerful from the book. Overcoming imposter syndrome is such a big thing today because more people have access to more opportunities. More people are seeing more things happening in the world and knowing what's going on in the world. I know that in my own life, I've experienced imposter syndrome multiple times because I'm constantly in rooms that I never thought I'd be in. I'm constantly surrounded by people that I feel inadequate to in some way or weak to in some way over time or rooms that I didn't imagine being or didn't expect to be in. And so imposter syndrome is something I experience time and time and time again. I have my own way of dealing with it. I'd love to know where have both of you felt imposter syndrome in your life and Let's start there. Where have you felt it first? Let's start there. This is a big one for me um, because like Raquel said, when I was early on in my career, I was, it wasn't like a beautiful welcoming for me. It was very much um, my personality is too much. People can only handle me in small doses. I'm a cartoon character. And, and, you know, in this career, it's all your personality. So like, that was very damaging at a young age when I was starting out. So in my mind, I had, I was like 21, 22. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you hear all that and you believe it because it's coming from people who are way above you in this corporate world, you know? And this is something that I, I am so grateful. You know, I work with Ryan Seacrest and he, from the very beginning, has been so encouraging to me and he saw something in me and I, I would not be 
where I am if it wasn't for him believing in me because I did have to deal with a lot of adversity from other people. Um, it was very damaging. And so, and it was like every step of the way in my career, like I remember when I got my first TV gig at E, I had it all over again. In a bat, like I was like, well, I'm too much and I need to, you know, lower, lower myself and, and be a little bit quieter. And um, every step and every milestone that I was making in my career, I felt really nervous at the start because I was just like, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't, this isn't, I don't deserve this. Um, and, and there's also a part of it too, where it comes from, you know, I, I never dreamed that this was possible. You know, like I, I always envisioned it, but I never thought that it was actually going to be, be a reality. And so when it's actually becoming a reality, it's just this crazy kind of like, I don't deserve this type of thing. Um, and so overcoming it has been a process, like a major, major process, because I've had to kind of unwind and like unhear all of these things. And it's so funny because it's like the people who see potential in you and believe in you, that number was far more than the ones that didn't believe and that try to put me down. But yet those ones are like the loudest voices and they're the hardest that you can't get them out of your head. I think it took me a decade to like get them out of my head. Yeah. That's You've really that's, done the work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's so true. I mean, the noise of other people's opinions is always louder than all these voices of always. support and encouragement. And, uh, yeah, Raquel, how about you? Yeah. yeah. So for me, I think, um, having and continuing to remind myself of how big God is and whatever, whoever is listening, you call it God, the universe, a higher, higher power. I think when we have a revelation of, of just how big that is, it's extremely humbling. And so for me, maybe similar to you, I found myself in, in my, I found myself in a lot of rooms with people where I'm like, wow, how did I end up here? And a prayer that I've always prayed is, God, I don't want to love anything or anyone more than I love you. And so I think when you go into a room, you understand that I am worthy to be here because I am a human being and we are all worthy. And when you understand the bigness of God, the higher power of the universe, you understand that we all play a small part in this journey of being human. And I think that's really allowed me to overcome imposter syndrome because I do feel worthy. I feel worthy to be in the room with people who maybe I admire, maybe have achieved more than me, but like, what an honor I get to learn from them. And, and, um, and I'm worthy to be there because I am human. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. That, that, that really hit me. I love that. And, uh, yeah. And I think for me also, from a practical sense, I've started to embrace imposter syndrome as a sign that I'm growing. Yeah. And so I find that I've started to look at imposter syndrome as every time I feel it, it means I'm doing something that's uncomfortable. Challenging. It's true. And, yeah. and I will say, yeah. I make it a point to surround myself with better. Same. I yeah, surround yeah. myself with people who are further along than me, who challenge me, who help me to grow. And I have always been that way because I want to be better. Yeah. And and I don't think we ever arrive. I, I wrote about it in the book, but... I said, Maya Angelou, she, she did an interview with Oprah in her, her later years. And, and she said, I'm still learning. Yeah. I don't yeah. know when I know enough. I'm still, I've, I've learned, you know, a lot where I try to live what I know, but I still am not there. Yeah. And she was considered to be one of the wisest people in the world. Uh, it still is. And so I, I try to remember that. Yeah, absolutely. And Tanya, what was yours when, because Raquel looked at you and she was like, you did the work, like what were those 10, and you said it took 10 years, which I feel is a genuine real amount of time. I yeah. think a lot of the time today we're like, oh, you can get over imposter syndrome like tomorrow. And it's like, no, it takes years to craft your relationship with how you feel about feeling like an imposter. And I do have to say, I feel like it adds a little bit of fuel to the fire. You know what I mean? Like, I think it made me, I would go into a carpet and I... <laughs> You wouldn't, you, the amount of prep I did before a carpet was wild. Like I would be, I was doing research. I would watch every single movie, every single TV show, like do the whole background. I, I really would prepare because yeah, yeah. I had that imposter syndrome. Like you're not good enough. You're not good enough. So it made me overachieve, which I think ultimately was a good thing and a blessing. And so I think in a way I, I tried to kind of turn the narrative of imposter syndrome. And it was, I tried to realize like, oh, this is, this is helping me. It's like fueling me a little bit. So I feel like once I started to change the narrative and, you know, I started to grow and I was like, okay. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like I just had to like quiet that voice. Yeah, yeah. I I I really appreciate that, and and I want you to know that I've always appreciated your energy and being around it. So <laughs> it's so great. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's always been massively Thank infectious you. and Thank just you. wonderful. And like <laughs> I remember years ago, that's when I remember connecting with you first was when like I think you told Ryan about Think Like a Monk on one of your episodes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I was getting hit up with loads of messages about it, saying oh, oh that no, they heard it. Yeah, yeah. And and then I think that's I think that was like how we first like at least connected on Instagram and. And to me, it was just, I remember watching that clip back and it was just like, you you were so, like Ryan had no idea what it was. Right, right. And you were just so positive about what I was I'm doing. I'm very passionate. Yeah, very passionate. Very yeah, yeah. passionate. I'm also yeah. like, I think we take ourselves so, so seriously. I think that it's okay to be silly and totally. to be animated and to like, you know, I, I find there's so much vulnerability in those moments of life. And yet nobody wants to talk about these embarrassing things or, you know, like I used to do when I was dating, uh, I would like set the dinner table for myself and my future partner. Like wow. he wasn't there, but I would, and I would clean out my closet. So there was space for him to come. Like I did all those weird Tanya things. Tanya really has manifested her entire life. <laughs> yes, I love I it. But I'm like, I, I don't take myself too seriously. You know, I'm like, if somebody says something works for them, I'll try it, you yeah. know, try it. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. Share the embarrassing moments because we're all, we all have them. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. I don't think I've ever talked about this. When I came back from being a monk and I couldn't get a job anywhere, uh, I used to dress up as if I was going to work and I'd go to my local library and wow. sit there and read books and apply to jobs. But it was like me going to work, like yeah. that feeling of like, I've got to show up as if I already do. And then I'm able to attract, I'm able to behave better, I'm able to be more professional. And so I love that example though. Everyone's going to be doing that now. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. going to be the new trend. <laughs> everyone's, I'm going to see loads of videos the, of everyone setting up two the tables. Setting yeah, up maybe, the, the setting up of the table was like a little bit maybe too far, but I do, I love it. I I do yeah, encourage brilliant. the maybe creating I'm gonna try space. That, like create, like give yourself yeah. a drawer that's just empty in your room and give a big chunk of your closet that's just empty. And I was like, this is me creating space. Like, how am I supposed to bring a man into my life that I desire so much if there's no space for him in here? Wow. Like, wow. actually no space. There is not an inch of space in this room for somebody to come in. So I created, I left an entire drawer, like a big <laughs> drawer. So cool. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. And now who, uh, who takes up more space? I still take up more space. But, <laughs> but there's a lot of space for Robbie and all of his yeah. He has one drawer. He has yeah. one drawer. I'm but. the opposite. I have a way bigger wardrobe than Robbie. <laughs> oh, really? It's so bad. Yeah, yeah it's it. so bad. I um, love it. Yeah, Robbie is so understanding. <laughs> so, so, so supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. All right, the next, the next one that I picked out that I loved, and everyone who's listening, there are 100 days to finding the hope and joy you want. I'm just picking some of my favorite that stood out to me and talking to these incredible authors, Tanya Rad and authors. Raquel Stevens. Uh, authors, yes, exactly, authors. authors. Uh, and of course, you can order the book in the uh, comments and caption. Um, all right, this second one, which I loved, was Be True to You. Mm. Um, I think this is something that is an idea that we really struggle with because I see this meme and I'm sure you both have seen it on like Instagram and TikTok and everywhere. And it's, it's probably my favorite thing. And so it says, society says, colon, be yourself. And then society says, colon, no, not like that. Right. Uh, so we yeah. all live in this world where it's like, be yourself. And then when you be yourself, I was like, no, 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 not like that. Yeah. Like, please don't be that version of yourself. Yeah. And it's like this really interesting idea that we're constantly being told, be true to you. But then when you really see someone in all their authenticity and all their flaws and all their genuineness, we don't like it. We consider it ugly. When the truth is we all have that inside yeah. of us. Like we, we all are that. So how have you both got comfortable with looking at the parts of yourself that make you uncomfortable? I don't want to live my life not accepting those things. So I've had times in my life where my flaws are my things that I don't, maybe love about myself have really, you know, they've given me anxiety or they've made me feel badly about myself. You know, when I, I especially during my high school years, I was like, do, you know, do I not look good enough? Am I not this enough? Am I not that enough? And it's like, I'm either going to live like that, live insecure, concerned with, you know, maybe more of the external things, or I'm going to be so filled up with who God created me to be, which is loved, valuable, accepted, just the way I am. And through doing that and accepting that and through being myself, I feel like I've been able to cultivate a life that is authentic to me. I have relationships that are real as a result of being myself, of being true to me. Because if we're not, 
the other path is not, it's not great. You're going to live constantly anxious. You're going to have surface relationships because you're hiding a part of who you are. And so I think that it takes courage to be vulnerable, but what's on the other side of that is total freedom and real connection and all the things that we really want in life. I think the what I have found to be the the issue with this is social media. And I love social media. I have a so really I, great yeah. relationship with it. I have people that the people that follow me on Instagram are so encouraging and so lovely. I get, yes, there's a couple here and there that are negative, sure. but for the most part it's a really beautiful community for me. So, but yeah. I have realized that I think it's really damaging in many ways because we're playing the comparison game. So it's like, yes, I'm going to be true to myself, but everybody is, you know, holding this bag. And so I'm going to spend all my money to get this bag. So I have it in my social media because that's what everybody's doing. And I'm not sitting here to say, you know, spend your money how you want. But I think that we've been wired to kind of uh, chase this unattainable lifestyle that might not be within our means. And we're like I wrote about in the book, being financially fit was really important for me because in saving, um, and you kind of have to like t take that comparison and, and live your own life because you're going to go into debt trying to keep up with the Joneses when that's not in your means. And so I think the comparison game in that way, um, I talk a lot about finances because I think it's not talked about, especially with younger women enough, you know, the importance of saving. Yeah. And also with all these filters, I remember I wrote a specific chapter about this because it was very alarming. I'm 30 years old and I was using this supermodel filter and I like loved the way I, I loved my face. I was like, wow, she's gorgeous. And so <laughs> I, I would get, I would look in my, in the mirror and I would get kind of like how I, I even went to the point where I took a screenshot of my face with the filter and a screenshot of my face regular, sent it to my friend that's a plastic surgeon and said, what do I need to do to look like this? Wow. And he responded with mm. like, I don't even know now. It was a nose job, cheek fillers, you know, some sort of taking out the fat in my cheek. And I was just like, this is so wild. I am a fully developed woman and I'm having this conversation right now. Imagine how damaging this is for somebody younger and insecure and figuring out who they are. And so I kind of made a point right then and there. I stopped using filters on Instagram because I was like, I don't want anybody to see me in a different way. And I also don't want to mess with my own head and like look in the mirror and think, oh, you know, like I want to look in the mirror and, and see myself. Yeah. And so I made a really big point to just like stop using the filters. And I put a challenge in the book for people to do the same for even just like 24 hours, just to like post without a filter it's okay and and kind of get used to that because i think the more you the more you are accepting of mm -hmm. yourself in every way social media and not on social media it just gives you a different sense of confidence i think yeah can you show me that filter afterwards yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it like makes your lips bigger it makes your family i don't Maybe know what this is that. doing oh, like no that that i love that challenge by the way mm. i think that challenge is awesome i i love the idea that it's obviously, if anyone wants to change the way they look or anything, I, you know, I don't think anyone here is saying, you're, yeah, I don't think, I don't not, think anyone's saying I you're not Botox, at all. I get Botox. It's not yeah. like, a, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not against yeah. any of it. Totally, totally. And but I think that there there's a fine line between, you know, uh, looking at yourself and just being sad on a regular yeah, 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 basis yeah. and just... And, and almost that distance that's created between when you start seeing yourself as someone else on a screen. Right. Mm. And then when you start seeing yourself as someone else in the mirror and that distance yes. gets wider and wider and wider, yeah. that's really hard. Yeah. Right. And if I remember when, so when we were in the monastery, there were no, this is really phenomenal. When we are in the monastery, there's no mirrors. Whoa. So you lose the idea yeah. of identity and how you look. Now you, you shave your hair and stuff, so you don't even have hair to look at or whatever. But the point is that, I would catch myself looking at my reflection when I was like, if I was on the streets and I was walking past a store or a window, I would catch myself looking at my reflection because I was so used to that from before. And it was so interesting to me to not look in the mirror for like a, a big chunk of wow. my life. That, it was yeah. just such a fascinating thing of like, you lose that sense of like, that's important and you actually have time to go inward. That's wild, Jay. Yeah, wow. and so, so hearing your idea in the same way of like, hey, don't use filters, you actually get more time to get to know yourself. You get more time to love yourself, appreciate yourself and and deal with the reality uh, rather than a false reality that can really mislead you and mess you up totally. with when you do look in the mirror and now you're disappointed, mm. 
with with how you look. Because and Facetune is is yeah. wild. I mean, you can you can really do some wild things on that. Yeah, you have to be really skilled to use those things. Well, yeah, but it, it does. It does like morph. It, I don't like, even try. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining. Yeah. Like. No, I'm not. I, I'm terrible at that stuff. I'm like terrible at all that stuff. But uh, but no, I I really love both your answers to that, and I love that challenge. And the book has more challenges in it. Lots yeah. of challenges, which, which I book, love. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. which I love uh, challenges because I think that they're the simple little habit tricks yeah. and hacks that we need in order to learn these very deep, profound lessons. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was just saying uh, on an interview that I was doing was uh, the idea of, and I'd love everyone to think about this, and I'd love you to come up with a challenge for this, maybe live okay. in real time. Yeah, maybe. let's do it. Uh, I, I just came up with this, so <laughs> ignore me if it's really hard, but we'll try and, and if it goes terribly, we'll cut it out. Okay. So I was talking about, so we talked about the mirror one about me in the monastery, and actually what you're coming up with is like a brilliant challenge for that same principle. Uh, another thing that I felt I learned uh, while living as a monk was we lost the concept of time because I didn't have to be anything by 25. Or if I would have stayed longer as a monk, it wasn't like by 30, you have to be married and this, right? Like, so when I lived as a monk, there was no timeline because once you're a monk, you're a monk and there was nothing that you had to do at 30, 40, 50. And obviously I didn't, I wasn't there for that long, but you could see the 70 year old monks we're doing the same thing that the 25-year-old monks were doing. Like there was no big discrepancy in that. And so you lose the sense of time. How do you think we can all let go of that sense of like, well, by 30, I need to be in a relationship. By 40, I need to be a millionaire. By whatever it may be, right? The, these timelines that society comes up with, can we, could we all co-create a challenge that helps people uh, lose a sense of time? It's funny that you bring that up because I think that's something that I really struggle with. Right. Like very much so, you know, I thought I was going to be married with kids at 25. And so when that didn't happen, I was like, oh. You know what? And I have some, I want you to share an example that you have told me before, because I think it's really good. I think that um, there's a scripture that I love and it says, talks about like content with little, content with much. You know, it it talks about being content with whatever circumstance you're in. Mm. And I think what's interesting is that we can be like, oh, I just really want to be married. I really want a partner. And then you talk to your married friends and they're like, enjoy your single life, whatever. (laughs) You talk to people with kids. You're like, I want kids. And they're like, oh, enjoy having no kids. And, you know, I think that each season of life is so beautiful and unique in its own way. Mm. And I think when we make a choice to just be happy happy and grateful for right now. And it's like, okay, I'm single. I don't have kids. I have my freedom. I can pick up and do whatever I want at any time. Like that is a blessing for right now. But Tanya got a direct message oh, from someone. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him the story okay, it's, so, and everybody the story. It's so, that was beautiful, by the way, Raquel. That, that really, that's such a, I love that. Thank uh, you. Content with little. Content, content with much. With much. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. And it is so important to, to appreciate the season that you're in because I think I was never shy about the fact that I want, like I wanted to be married. I want to have kids and that's a desire of my heart. So like I would pursue that. Like I pursued my career. When I tell you I went on probably 200 dates in seven years, I went on probably more. Wow. And I really gave it my all. Like I pursued it just as hard as I pursued my career. And it's funny because I think God did this in like he purposefully gave me a very long single season because I would not have pursued my career the way that I did had I been in a romantic relationship. And I know that about myself because I go, I'm all in, you know, like I'm all in on my relationship right now and I love it. It's the best season ever. But had this been 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to build what I did. And so I know like God was like, I see you. I know I'm going to fulfill the desire of your heart. Maybe not in the time that you think. And it's interesting because I got this DM and I had spent the day, um, I went on like a nine mile run and I was cleaning out my apartment and I was saging and I was, you know, I was on Instagram and just saying, you know, what I was doing for the day and I was going through a breakup. So I was heartbroken and I was really sad and I wasn't shy about it. And some woman responded to me and she said, I would give anything to trade lives with you right now. I am currently breastfeeding one baby, potty training another that's peeing all over the floor while I'm making my husband breakfast. I would give anything to be in your situation right now. And here she is with the life that I desire. And she's saying she wants to switch places with me. And so it was such like a direct message from God that like, you're where you're supposed to be. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy the season. It's not going to be like this forever. You know, seasons don't last forever. They are seasons for a reason. And so it was like very, 
timely, that message. Wow. Yeah. I guess the challenge could be think about your life today and where you're at and what you're grateful for. So maybe write it down. I'm, if I'm single, I have my freedom. I can go to bed when I want. I can go to the store if I want to. I can go meet a friend. Um, if you have kids, think about, you know, things that you're grateful for with your kids, with your husband. And so maybe the challenge is, you know, I'm grateful for this right now instead of focusing on future. I want more of this. I want a better job. I want, you know, partner, boyfriend, husband, kid. Like just think about it's it's gratitude, right? Yeah. And I think gratitude eliminates angst about the future. But yeah. I also think um, I remember reading challenge. this in your first book. It was about not attaching your happiness to like things, to to the title or the whatever. You know what I mean? It's like attaching your happiness to this like state of mind and like relationships and that stuff that is what life is about. Yeah, no, I, I love what you're both saying. I think the Freaky Friday moment's really interesting. Like this idea of like switching lives with someone that you think has it all. Mm -hmm. And if you were able to do that, most of us, you know, maybe would backtrack to some degree or there'd be some more appreciation for our life, even if, and of course that's, that's different depending on how different those examples are. But I think also but, it's different for women because we do have like a biological clock. Yeah, so there yeah. is like that little timeline and I've, I've been kind of dealing with that a little bit lately, but I think now there's so many resources. There's so much you can do. I know women that are having babies on their own, you know, they couldn't find a partner. And so yeah. they're just doing it on their own. And I think it's such a liberating time to be a woman. And so I think all of these things are slowly starting to like become less of mm. a timeline. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, and, and I agree with you. I think that, you know, I think the pressure to do something because of just time it, and you're right, as a woman, definitely you, you experience it far more. And it's, I talk to Radhi about this all the time and it's, it's such a, yeah, it's a challenge, but I, I like that challenge, Raquel, of like figuring out what you currently have that you once dreamed of. Yeah. Like it's almost like, yes. what do you currently have that you really wanted? Yeah. Because there was a time, like you're saying, that you will have really pursued the career. Now you have the career and you're pursuing the next thing. And it's like, yeah. but what do I have right now that I once really wished for? Mm -hmm. It could be as small as I get a bit of free time. It could be as yeah. big as I have the career I want. It could mm -hmm. be as huge as I have the partner and the kids, whatever it is. Or I can run a mile today. Yeah, I can you run know? a mile like today. It's, it yeah, can exactly. be so small. Exactly. And I... One more thing too that I want to say is what, which touches on all of this and helps with it and is actually the reason that we wrote the book is that the best advice I could give to anyone is to prioritize your inner life because when your inner life is strong, you can handle anything that comes your way. So those seasons where you're like really wishing and hoping for that thing and you don't have it yet, your inner life is what sustains you. When you get the job, when you have the partner that you've always wanted, it humbles you and it fills you with gratitude as opposed to ego and arrogance and everything in between. When your inner life, when your spirit's strong, even in the mundane moments, that's what gives you inspiration, fills you with awe. And so I think just the best life advice for anyone at any age is prioritize your inner life. That will fill you up to be able to handle anything that comes your way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I have something that I often repeat to myself and others, which is, when things are bad, work hard. But when things are good, work harder. Yes. And I mean that on your internal self. Mm -hmm. like yeah. When things are good externally, it's really easy to forget that mm -hmm. actually you're only able to have this amazing external experience because of the inner work Absolutely. that you did like years ago or months ago. And then when things are great, you like stop doing the inner work. And then all of a sudden now you're in a cloudy season and that because you didn't do the inner work in the last season, it's not protecting you. And so, I, yeah, I love that. And, and if that's the heart of the book, I think, you know, it, it really, I, I, would, I would love that. And I know our community does that. Everyone who listens to On Purpose is such a inner yeah. work person. Uh, and I'm glad that they now have a hundred new ways of, of doing that. Uh, one of the other ones, I've, I've got a few more, if you don't mind. Yeah, if, let's, if you, uh, got, let's go for it. We're so having a great more, time. But, all right, I want to talk about this one because I think it's a big one. Be done with shame. Oh, yeah. Right. This one was like this. This one really stood out to me because I think shame and guilt are things all of us carry in so many different ways. They weigh us down. They let us potentially push someone away that we love. They block us from receiving love. Yeah, like yeah. Shame and guilt are just this huge 
what looks like a shield, but actually is just a barrier and yeah. keeping things out and, and not letting us be ourselves and not letting people love us. Talk to me about what shame and guilt has blocked in your life and how you've changed your relationship with shame and guilt. Yeah. So Brene Brown uh, talks about shame as shame is I am bad and guilt is I've did I've done something bad and guilt can be a good thing, right? Makes us not repeat the same mistakes, but shame is a deep, deep belief of. Say I'm that not, again. That's really powerful. Okay, it's, so repeat, yeah, it's so good. I know. So Brene, Brene Brown describes two things, shame and guilt. Shame is I am bad. Guilt is I've done something bad. Guilt can be good and healthy because it helps us to not make the same mistakes again. Shame is extremely difficult and heartbreaking because it's a deep belief of I am bad. I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. And when we live our lives from a place of shame, we miss out on, on being our true authentic self. And so I almost could cry talking about it because shame, it, you know, in friends that I've, close friends that I have that have experienced shame, it breaks my heart because you can see, you know, debilitating. It's, it, it's debilitating. And in my own life, areas where I've felt some shame, maybe I'll go back to high school, maybe, you know, other girls getting the boyfriend or there's that me not feeling pretty enough, for example, you have to do the inner work, right? Because it's like, that's not true. It's like, I am beautiful. God's created me exactly the, the way that I am um, meant to be. And if I go on to carry that shame, then that's going to affect me. It's going to affect me when I'm out on dates. It's going to affect, you know, how I see myself. And that um, is extremely detrimental. And so you get through shame through first acknowledging it, being able to speak it aloud, maybe to a trusted friend, and then you pray about it or you meditate on it. And that's when you do the inner work of like, okay, God, the universe, help me to see myself as you see me, beautiful, wonderful, made exactly the way that I was created to be. And it takes time and it takes work. Tanya's really big on visual, like seeing things visual. So she you've told me before about your body, you'll write on the mirror, I am this, I am beautiful, I am this, and, and seeing it and speaking that over yourself. So when negative thoughts come, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't like my love handles or whatever. It's like, I'm beautiful. The, my love handles are beautiful and speaking truth over yourself. And that is how you come against shame. Wow. That's a great explanation. Thanks, Raquel. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm just going to, no, 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 like, no right. yeah, it's like, Mike but it's yeah. big, I mean, I could, we could yeah. do a whole podcast on shame because yeah. it, break, I, I literally, I'm like getting emotional thinking about it right now because I saw I, you, I saw no, you I could cry. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it breaks my heart. It's like, because I Because people I just, live in that. They live no, in No, I know. The, yeah. I, I can't believe I'm going to start crying on Jay Shetty's podcast <laughs> right now. <laughs> But I, my friends that I, I, and you can see it on people and you can feel it off of them and it holds them back. And that's why I care a lot actually about, we want to take this book into schools and into mm. junior highs and high schools because kids that are dealing with shame, their brains are still developing or it's a lot harder when you're adult. I think about my friends that are adults and they are are experiencing that shame. It's a lot harder to move forward and, and change those negative self-beliefs but when you're younger it's mm -hmm. a, it's easier because your your brains aren't fully developed so it is possible everyone can do the work everyone can heal and change but it absolutely breaks my heart and and for anybody who's listening who feels shame about something in their life maybe they haven't ever shared with anybody it's like it doesn't matter what it is you are you are enough nobody is ever too far gone there's a mistake you've made there's nothing you've done that can't be um healed and mm. it's just yeah and the difference yeah. that, that she expressed from Brene Brown the difference between guilt and shame is so powerful so because powerful. it is yeah. it's like we've all we all make mistakes we all trip we all fall and being able to kind of like speak on that guilt pray about it I made that mistake and I don't want to live in that mistake and moving forward with my life like is so there's so much power in that, that yeah. I think a lot of people don't know how to get to the other side yeah and and I think often we stop other people moving on with their guilt because we're still stopping ourselves from moving on from our guilt. Yeah. And it's like an insecurity when we see someone sure. say, I'm going to leave my shame behind, guilt helped me grow. And we we can't deal with that because we we haven't done that for ourselves. Yeah. Um, so powerful. And and I'm putting it out there too. I think I think this book would make a great book club book. Yes. Uh, I can see a lot of people reading it together, uh, reflecting on a lot of these ideas, doing these challenges together. Like it's a very practical book. And, for sure. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of practical books because I think that 
it's not just a book that you're going to read on your own. Hopefully there's a book that you grab for your friends. You're going to read it together. You're going to discuss all these, even in the way us three are. Like, this is really, yeah, yeah. I, I find this really therapeutic. Like, you know, I, and I feel part, like I'm in therapy right now. Yeah, well, even me, but even me, like, I feel like I'm opening up because you guys are opening up. Yeah. And there's these beautiful themes that you've selected in the book that everyone can relate to. Like none, none of this, everything that everyone, everything we've all said is, is stuff that we're all dealing with in very unique, different ways. Totally. Uh, but it's still there. Okay, I've got a couple more that I want to pick oh, with right. you. I really like this one because it's obviously linked to my new book, um, Eight Rules of Love. Yes. And I love that this comes up in your book. So it's prioritized character over chemistry. Uh. Uh, and I love this because, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big romantic. I'm a big fan of chemistry. And I'm also just a big fan of love. Like I'm obsessed with it. I'm, I'm kind of like you in the sense of, I always had this obsession with wanting to be madly in love, wanting to be married, um, wanting to have like this amazing relationship. Like that was a big part of yeah. who I want, what I wanted when I was a kid. And then I married someone who doesn't like PDA, who doesn't like, <laughs> who, who isn't a romantic. It's been amazing. Like it's, it's so much growth in a beautiful totally, way. Totally, totally. Um, but I love this idea of character over chemistry. And I wanted you to describe, uh, and maybe Tanya, you can start with this one, but mm -hmm. it's like, what is the... What is the difference? And then what did you mean by this? So I was at this, a friend's wedding. Um, um, this was a while ago. And the, 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 the guy that was officiating the, the wedding, the pastor said it was, a, it was a Bible verse. And it was all about prioritizing character over chemistry. And he said, chemistry can lead to some healthy, you know, couple good years of marriage character is what's going to last you a lifetime in a marriage. Ooh. And I started thinking about that. And it's so true when you're dating, chemistry is the first thing that we all just, we all cling to, you know, I want to make out with you. I like, you know, I'm very physically attracted to you. Chemistry is what takes the dating world, you know, to the next step, but it's the character. You can have chemistry with somebody and that chem but that's going to fizzle. It's like a fire. It's going to burn out, but character is what lasts a lifetime. And so that's what I found to be so interesting when I was in my dating world, because it was, I was prioritizing the chemistry. It was like, oh no, I don't want to go out with him. Cause like, I don't want to make out with him. You know, like that was always my go-to was like, what was I physically attracted to him? And yes, I think that is important, obviously, in a relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't think it is the number one thing. And I think if you meet someone or you know, if a friend's trying to set you up and they're like, this is a really quality person, they have a really great character, I think it's totally worth going out with because that's what's going to last the lifetime, I think. And that's something that I always say about my boyfriend right now. His character is like- I met him too. Yes. He's yeah, the yeah, best. He's awesome. he's, yeah, he's we love great. Robbie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> he yeah, yeah. is just, his character is so Good strong. Energy. He's got great energy. He's been through so much in his life and you wouldn't even know it because he puts it, like he just carries himself so well. He doesn't bring past experiences into his new relationship. He just has such a strong character. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and we obviously have chemistry too, but the character is what trumps everything. Like it is just, it's so important. And I think when you're dating, remembering that is like so crucial. So I want to ask you in those 200 dates you went on, yeah. right? Or something like that. <laughs> so, which, which by the more. way is inspiring. And, and I want to, I want you to talk about that because I have so many friends right now who struggle with dating, are scared of dating. I was literally talking to a friend, you know who you are, if you're listening to this yeah. episode. Uh, I sent a voice note late last night to a friend saying, dude, this guy, I was like, you just need, I was like, I was like just terrifying. I was like, dude, you literally need to meet this person because I don't see what's, what you don't like about her. Like as in, and, and if you don't go out on a date, you're not going to know anything. Right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can't decide based on a picture in someone's bio of like <laughs> totally. who they are. Like, so I was just saying, you need to get out there. And I think so many people today, and we have to be honest, like the pandemic set us back with social interaction, social yeah. anxiety mm -hmm, went up. People mm -hmm. are scared of meeting people. People are uh, forgotten how to have conversation. People may not be as confident with who they are anymore. Like yeah. we, we can't ignore that. Uh, how did you, first of all, how did you find the courage, inspiration to go out on 200 dates, like every time? Because I think people go out on one or five right, and or tired. seven and they're tired. Yeah. Like it's exhausting. Yeah. Like, and it's very disheartening. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that first. And then the second part I'm going to ask you is, oh no, I'll save the second question. And then Raquel, I'm coming to you in a second. All so. right. All right go ahead, <laughs> I would love to talk to her about yeah, dating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that uh, I 
was like the one hit wonder. I'll go out with anybody once because I th- I'm with you. Like you don't know if you're going to get along with somebody. You can only tell so much on a photo and a bio. So I would always say yes to a first date. Um, but I no didn't matter what, no, even if you didn't like their picture, even if you weren't attracted. Yeah. Right. I would go out. Um, but I was, I didn't go on very many second dates. Like I'm very quick to know. And so I would know like, it's not going to happen. So when I say 200, it was just like, yeah, I would just keep it moving, you know, keep it moving. There were a couple in there that I would date, you know, a couple months here and there. And I think I did the longest I did somebody was six months. Um, so they're like little heartbreaks throughout the whole, and it is, it's disheartening. It's just like, is he out there? Like, I thought this was going to be him. And then it turns out, you know, this guy, like I, I dated when I tell you the stories and that's why I wrote the dating book, because I'm like, it's, it feels like a movie. Some of these things I met a guy on Wilshire Boulevard, rolled down his window, asked me on a date, went out with him. He was total. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> she really said yes. Yes. Said I yes. really said yes. Yeah. But you know, time oh after God. time, it does get very disheartening, but I always had this journal. It's called my dear future husband journal. And after really bad dates, I would come home and I would just write in it. And okay. Write. That's the book. <laughs> my dear future husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the next. That's part two that's of the sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's your dating book. Yeah, yeah, as I'm saying, like, my dear future husband. I see yeah, that, yeah, but I would always look at. I would write in, in like I would write about hope and the hope that I had for this man. I knew was out there because when God puts a desire in your heart, He fulfills it. Again, it might not be on your timetable, but like it's such a strong desire of my heart to have a partner, to share a life, to be married, to have a family. And so I knew He was going to fulfill it. So I would write to my future husband. Just I would just write to him in this journal after every bad date. And it kind of kept me out of that mindset of this sucks. There's nobody out there. Like, uh, our guys really like, you know, I mean, I it was everything under the sun. So that journal really helped me keep hope alive in my life. Um, so that's kind of how I navigated the, the dating. Cool. All right, Raquel, I'm coming to you and then I'm coming back to you okay. for a question. Raquel, all, all right. right so qu- no, well, I, I guess the question's about obviously this character of a chemistry piece and you know, you've, you know, you've talked about this before, just about how like dating and relationships are sacred to you. And it's hard. Like you, you, yeah. you you're not, you don't just dive in and, no, no, no. you know, you're very careful and composed and like, again, it, you know, I think you're such an accomplished person internally and externally and, and society. And I talk a lot about this in my book where society has made us believe that we're inadequate if we're not with someone. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I completely disagree with that. Obviously. So do I, yeah. Um, you have another section in this book, which is all about the power of finding solitude, uh, which I love, which I'm such a big proponent of. And even in Tanya's case, she was talking about how like being single was so important for her now being together and she was able to achieve things. So how do you, how have you made peace with that part in your life where that's something you're figuring out? It's not something that's worked out, but you're not disqualifying yourself because of it. You're not making it reflect on who you are. And obviously, as I'm saying, I know who you are and- um, anyone I'm just throwing out there would be lucky to be with Raquel. Aww, true. Uh, Thank truly, you. <laughs> truly. And I mean that. And, and I've always said that to you, like off camera, like you know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so, but but you're someone who's who's patient and getting it right. So like, how do you deal with that as we're dealing with all this other yeah. noise as well? Because it's a great question. So first of all, character over chemistry every day. I completely agree with everything that Tanya said. You can find a lot of people that you have chemistry with, but you want to be with a person of character. That's yeah. what's gonna lead to a peaceful life. Um, I have not dated seriously in the last 10 years, yeah, which I yeah. think can be really surprising to people because they're like, you're in your 20s, it's, you know, you're, you're prime and and you're not dating. And it is something that I take extremely seriously. So I do go on dates um, and I'm open to it. But unless something truly feels right and I see the person as a person of integrity, a person of character, I time is too precious and I will not invest my time in someone that I don't feel is right for me. And um, through not dating, I've been able to have an amazing time in my 20s with my friends and building a career and traveling and living a great, very fulfilled life as a single person. And I feel enough and whole on my own. So for me to be with someone, which I would love to be with someone, I would like to find a partner of character, someone that together we are stronger. I love that saying, you know, two are stronger than one. I, I, I would absolutely love that, but I am totally content and at peace in the meantime, and I'm open to it. And I think that, you know, you're right. There is a lot of pressure on people to feel like, oh, I'm not enough if I don't have a partner. But of course we are. We're, we're individuals and we are, you know, the truth is you're born alone and you die alone. And so you, your relationship with you is is the most important thing to prioritize. And when you prioritize that, 
then you're going to be the best version of yourself for when that partner does come But along. I do think Absolutely. it's like so important for people to hear that because yeah. I do think that um, there are a lot of people, myself included, if I looked at myself at 21, I didn't think I could function without a, I was, yeah. I was just jumping from relationship to relationship. I didn't want to be alone. Yeah, yeah. And when I was single, I was able, like I, I lived alone for the first time. And I, you know, I started investing my money and like, you know, things that I just never thought that I would do or what I could do on my own. You know, like I always say like, I'm a modern woman and I really feel like I developed this strong sense of self. And now that I, I do have a partner, he, it does, it just, it's like, um, it is. It's, she's made me stronger as a person yeah. and my life better. But I feel like it's so important because if you just attach yourself to somebody because you don't want to be single, yeah, it can lead you down a bad path. It can, yeah. You know, it's not going to lead you to your potential if you're just dating somebody because you don't want to be alone. I think yeah. you need to date someone t to, to yeah. elevate you. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think it's so right. Like, I think when you run from relationship to relationship to relationship, that's when you fall in love instead of growing in love. And I think for anyone like... I've, I've been with Riley now for nearly 10 years and it's, it's been more growth than falling. Like, yes, I like that fall and grow. Yeah. Falling, it's like like we, yeah we fell in love. Sure. Like that statement has always, I've always wanted to fall in love. So that's, that's like, but that's because of Hollywood and that's because of movies and music. Yeah. That's not because of me. When it now as someone who believes I'm in love with someone who's in love with me, we're growing every day. We don't fall more deeply in love together. Like right. we, mm. we grow more deeply in love. There's so much more evolution and learning. And it's really interesting. I was talking about this the other day that so many people feel like enjoyment is the peak of a relationship. And I'd actually say like the amount you've grown together and evolved together is like the peak of a relationship because it makes life easier yeah. uh, rather than, you know, just pleasure. Not saying there isn't any kind of like the chemistry and character point. I want to go back to both of you on that because I fully agree with you too. How do you discern character? Like how do you, because I think a lot of people say, I know if I'm attracted to someone, right? right you can right, tell. Right. I know if we have a bit of a spark because we're going back and forth and there's, you know, this stress and excitement, but character, it's like, how do you know? Because character is such a big word. Uh, you know, we always hear these scary stories about, I was dating this guy and then he had a whole nother family, like in another yeah. state, right? Like, I, I don't this know, I hear, like, no, I hear stuff so, like this all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, right? It's so real. Yeah, Every true yeah. crime podcast starts out with like this shady boyfriend. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, or like, or like you find out that, you know, this person isn't everything they said they were. Yeah. They didn't have that much money or whatever it was. Or like, or they didn't look like, whatever. Like, there's just so many. And of course- Tinder swindler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. wild. And those are all extreme scenarios, right? So I don't want to put that out there yeah, and yeah, yeah. make everyone feel like, oh my God, everyone you meet, but you have to be skeptical and you have to get a private investigator or something like that. <laughs> um, but but I guess my point is, how have you learned to discern character when you are meeting people and when you were dating? And I would love to hear it from someone who's like gone through that process like more recently than me. I think um, the way that they handle, obviously the first meeting, uh, offering to pick you up or, you know, like offering to pick you up, but also saying if you're more comfortable to meet there, but like the gesture, um, seeing if they want to come to you, how do they treat the people at the restaurant? You know, how do they treat the waiter? How do they treat the hostess? Mm -hmm. um, are they, you know, um, when they're speaking about their life and their passions and other people, are they talking badly about other people? Mm -hmm. Do they have a, a, a sense of spirit or, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's just being super like lasered in on how they're, you know, like on a first date, there's only so much you can tell, but I feel like you can also still tell a lot. Well, and I think I'm really big on looking at the fruit of people's life. And I think what I mean by that is who are their friends? Who do they surround themselves with? Um, are they generous? It doesn't have to be with money. Are they generous mm -hmm. with their relationships? Are they generous with their time? Um, but I think who people have around them says a lot about a person. Mm -hmm. So if you meet someone and you meet the, the friends are not, they're not really cutting it, you know what I mean? It's, or, or there's certain things that feel a little bit off, then, um, that's a sign. Yeah, those are great. I love all of those. So everyone who's listening and watching, write those down yeah. because they're so awesome. Take a screenshot of where we are on the episode right now because all of those are such great ways to know character. Uh, my Some of mine that I love is I, I want to see someone when they're tired, stressed, and irritated. I Ooh, feel like when I see good, someone, Jay. and that doesn't make me decide mm. whether they're a good person or yeah. bad person because by the way, I'm really not nice when I'm irritated. Um, but it's like, I want to see someone with those emotions because that's like really seeing their character. When you see people in a date, in an interview format, they're really tired, stressed yeah. or fatigued. 
And when you see someone who's feeling those things, like I remember when I first saw Radhi in those ways or Radhi saw me in those ways, it was healthy for us to actually get to know the kind of like, the reality of certain emotions you are going to feel if you end up with someone. Yeah. Those don't come out for a while. They though. don't. They no, don't. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. They're really right. hiding them. I yeah. think that character, it's not tested in our good moments. It is tested in our, That's what in I mean. our bad That's what moments. I mean. That's no, a true also, sign of somebody's character. But I think character, you can figure yeah. that out on a date. You know what yeah. I mean? I think also like learning, when you're learning about somebody, you can really kind of ask questions. And I feel like, I remember when I was dating, I was very aware of, of my mishaps and my patterns that were toxic in, in dating. And you know what I mean? Like being able to share that with somebody yeah. and like being vulnerable. Like, you know, I used to do this a lot and I would, you know, kind of being vulnerable in that way. And then just kind of seeing how they also dealt with, you know, adversity in their life, I think mm -hmm. is also a true testament to character. I agree. Before we get to the final five, is there a question I haven't asked you or something that's on your heart? Both of you are such heart centered, uh, deep people that like, I want to make sure that if there's anything intuitively that's within you that you really want to share with the on purpose community is there something that's on your mind or heart that I haven't asked you or you really want to share that you'd like to share our, our hope with right it's it's hard work to write a book you know and and, and so <laughs> tell me about it so our <laughs> hope is really that that people would read it and you know they would feel like they're reading along with two friends and that they would know that they're not alone and i'm not just saying that as something to say like whatever you're facing in life you are not alone and so um you know, we welcome people sending us, you know, direct messages or if you want to send an email, if you, you know, you have questions or even if you want prayer for something like, you know, I'm here and, and we're here and um, we are all in this journey together, on this journey together. And I think that it can be easy to turn on the news or to look at our world today and feel very discouraged and think this is not a, the sunshine mine. This is a dark world. There's a lot of unrest but the truth is there is way more good in the world than there is bad. And sometimes you have to fight a little bit for it, but it is possible to live life with what we call the sunshine mind. And um, I hope that people through reading this can can feel that from our writing. Absolutely. Yeah, I really, I do. I hope that there are tangible things that people can take away, you know, and I we wrote in there like live life through hope colored glasses, because I think oftentimes it's easier to, to look at the negative and go down a dark path. And I think that we choose hope, we choose joy. And, and it's not to be little people that have, you know, strong feelings and things that are going on in their lives. But I think like on the daily, you can really you can kind of train your brain to to look at life in a different way. And so Hope yeah. people find that. Yeah, so beautiful. And and again, uh, the book is called The Sunshine Mind, 100 Days to Finding the Hope and Joy You Want. Uh, Tanya Rad and Raquel Stevens, make sure you follow them again. If you don't, uh, go and grab a copy of the book. I have my final five that we ask every guest uh, who's ever been on the show on their first time on the show. Great. Uh, so this is a rapid fire, fast five, mm -hmm. which means the questions can only be answered in one word to one sentence maximum. Whoa, okay. Uh, there are people who follow the rules and <laughs> there's nothing to win <laughs> apart from my validation. But, but there's some people that do it perfectly and there's some people that go off piste. I would prefer that we keep it tight because it's 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 part of it. It makes them fun. Uh, okay, and, and whoever goes first doesn't matter. We can do back and forth on each question. All right, the first question is, um, what is the best advice you ever you've ever received, heard, or given? There's room for everyone. Oh, Chelsea Handler told me that. Oh, that's like cool. one of my first days of work. Oh, that's too much. Sorry. No, that's perfect. No, okay. that was a great answer. No, no, no. If I keep nodding, like, oh, that's uh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, I There's room for everyone. That's cool. Prioritize the inner life. My mom taught me that. I love that. Both great answers. Very tight and very precise. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Uh, second question. What is the worst advice you've ever heard received? Heard or received? If he loved me, he would. Because? Oh, I'm going to ask you to complete that for me. If he loved me, he would. We always say if, if somebody loves you enough, they will do anything and right, everything. Right, right, and right, I think that that's just not, it's such an unrealistic expectation that we've been told for years and years and years. And I think part, yeah. it's 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 problematic. That's you. would love that one. Got another episode on that. All right, Raquel. Right before I moved to LA 12 years ago, I was living in Chicago and someone said to me, you're meant to stay here you know, the, the grass isn't greener on the other side, it's greener where you water it, which I think that statement can be true in cer certain times. But, you know, I disagreed with that person who was a big voice in my life at the time. I wrote about it in the book and I thought, no, my piece is telling me that I'm, you know, meant to go to LA. And I think a lot of times when people are close to us, we can 
listen to their advice and actually go with it, but listen to people, but then trust your inner voice. Mm, great, great. Okay, so yeah, it was bad advice because they were asking you to stay They're somewhere. They're telling like, me to stay, big, and I, I thought for a second, I was like, gets, yeah. maybe I will stay, but no. Uh, question number three, what's the biggest lesson you've learned in the last 12 months? Compromise is a beautiful thing. Mm. I think people often hear that word and they think you're selling yourself short. I think it, it can be a very beautiful thing. All right, Raquel? Uh, when you're living a life of integrity, you always sleep peacefully at night. Wow. I think I had a lot of moments this past year, like career stuff, different things that happened or, you know, people say this or they say that. And it's like, no, I know who I am. I have and, to say, yeah. watching you through that season of life, yeah. as a friend, it was I, it, she was so admirable to just see anybody that was in that situation could have really crumbled and really, you know, been shaken up by everything that was going on. And it did not, Raquel, she knows who she is. She knows the person, she knows her character. And she was not like, it was just, Aww, it was really you. cool to see because you really do like, I mean, and, and everything that's in the book, like you really, these are, this is how we live our life. And it's in those moments when you're faced with these situations that it comes into play and like you really yeah. were strong. Question number four, what's your favorite day each in this book that you can't wait when they, when people get it for them to read? Is there a specific day that like out of the hundred mm. days that you both like feel is one of your favorites that you can't wait for people to get to? I'm a big fan of catch a vision. Uh, I love, I make vision boards every single year. Mm -hmm. um, so I think catch a vision is one of my favorites. Nice. I I'm, can't remember exactly which day it was, but um, the, the one on forgiveness. I wouldn't expect you to remember a hundred days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, <laughs> I, um, catch a vision is day 54. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The catch a vision is day 54. And then which one was your one? Forgive. Uh, forgive someone, 63? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so forgive someone on page 63. Thank you, Jay, for reminding or to, for telling us page 63. Day 63. 63, yeah. Day 63. Um, you can't live a, a life of freedom without being able to forgive. And so I forgive everybody and everything. Um, sometimes that's a little more of a process. Sometimes it's easy. Um, but it is essential to live a happy life. Beautiful. All right. Fifth and final question for both of you. We I, we failed uh, on this, by no, the way. You did. We've been chatting away. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. But I've been asking. <laughs> okay. I've been asking. Okay. No, 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 no. You haven't failed at all. <laughs> you haven't failed at all. It's, I always get intrigued by answers yeah, yeah, to yeah. these yeah, yeah. five. And, and they, I ask people to answer them in one word or one sentence because then people get really thoughtful and then you can really yeah. get into it. Uh, okay. Fifth and final question. If you could create one law that everyone in the world had to follow, what would it be? I mean, I already thought of mine. Oh, all right. But it, it Perfect, goes yeah. along with the book. But I would want either no filters or anything on social media or people, it has to um, like say what was used on this photo. Do you know what I mean? Because I think as a young girl, you're looking at all these photos and they've been Photoshopped and they've been put through so many filters and you don't, you don't see that. Mm -hmm. So it's like if these <laughs> platforms would tell you how much work was in put in this photo, yeah. I think it would relieve a lot of these expectations that we put on ourselves. So I think either yeah. removing all those or having like to disclose what you used on your photos and videos. That is great. We've never had that on the show that's ever. A, I love that. That's a good that's one, a Tanya. Legit, yeah, that's wow. brilliant. That's really good, Tanya. I, really I think because like I do, I'm I really think strong. that there's a lot that goes into our, our psyche that we, from scrolling that you don't even realize is going into your psyche. Mm -hmm. That's very problematic. So if it's just all out there, you want to use your whatevers, use them, but just tell tell people. I love that one. Um, oh, okay. Mine would be uh, don't judge. Yeah. And I heard Maya Angelou, to quote her again, she said something along the lines of, if you are a human being, you could never say of another human being, I'm, I would never do that. Because if you were living their life circumstances, if you were in their shoes, you would maybe be capable of the same. Wow. And so I think we have to be very slow to judge each other and we need to give a lot more love, a lot more compassion. Beautiful answers. Everyone, the book's called The Sunshine Mind, 100 Days to Finding the Hope and Joy You Want. Uh, Tanya Rad and Raquel Stevens, um, make sure you go and grab a copy of the book. I'm so excited for my friends. Uh, one of my favorite things is to use my platform and community to support my friends and people that I love, people that I think are bringing amazing energy into the world. And these two wonderful humans are doing just that. So I hope you'll show them all your love, all your support, uh, all your energy and excitement. It would mean the world to me. And uh, thank you both for your time and energy on On Purpose. And thank you for thank your time, you. Jay. This means so much to us. And this has been incredible. 
Yeah. I could sit here for, I, I could sit here all day. <laughs> Literally. Like having too much fun. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. No, really, really appreciate it. Like yeah. honestly, can't say thank you enough. Amazing. I love it. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. If you love this episode, you'll really enjoy my episode with Selena Gomez on befriending your inner critic and how to speak to yourself with more compassion.